ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, where you are around the world. Uh, before I start introducing this webinar, please let me uh, inform general ground rules uh, that we will all follow during this webinar. Firstly, all participants will be muted uh, by default. Uh, if you have any comment that you would like to share uh, during the presentations, please feel free to write it down in the comments uh, item uh, in the screen. If you have any specific question that you uh, that you want to be addressed to the part uh, to the presenters, please add your question in the question and answer uh, uh, bar in the screen. Of course, uh, we are expecting many questions. We will do our best to summarize these questions and address them as much as possible. Uh, if we will not able to address your questions, please uh, bear with us that uh, we will be able, uh, hopefully um, uh, summarizing all these questions and getting back to you uh, after the webinar. Thank you all. And uh, I will start now introducing this webinar. Um, again, uh, I would like to welcome all of you, all participants from all around the globe. Uh, and also, I would like to extend our welcoming to our um, uh, uh, experienced presenters uh, uh, from Rodo, uh, the International Road Federation, as well as from the United Nations Department of Projects. Uh, this webinar entitled The Role of Road Safety Audits in Improving Traffic Safety. This webinar aims at uh, mainly introducing the road safety management structure and the role of road safety aud uh, audits and road inspections in the road safety management. They play an important and very core role. We need to understand their uh, uh, function, how these road safety audits being conducted and requirements of these road safety audits. During this event, which extends to three days, we will have three webinar sessions starting from today, addressing the general structure of road safety audits and require of, of, of road safety management and concentrating on the uh, procedure of conducting road safety audits, followed by the second session tomorrow at the same time, uh, addressing the uh, road safety audit requirement for uh, designers, uh, road designers and how road designers can incorporate the comments of road safety audits in improving road design. The final session the day after tomorrow on Tuesday on the same time will be addressing road safety on tunnels, which is an important and uh, uh, um, essential element when addressing uh, road safety in general. Before I start with this webinar, I would like to thank the organizers of this webinar, uh, starting with Qatar Transportation and Traffic Safety Center in uh, Qatar University, which is the lead um, academic unit that deals with road safety and transportation research in the state of Qatar, as well as the National Traffic Safety Committee of the state of Qatar and the International Road Federation, who is jointly all of, uh, joined all efforts with us to deliver this training program as well as the World Conference on Transportation Research Society and uh, the Khatib and Anami uh, engineering consultation firm. Myself, I am Wael al Yassin. I'm Associate Professor at Qatar Transportation and Traffic Safety Center and the Chair of Traffic Safety Analysis and Policy Special Interest Group in the World Conference on Transportation Research Society. I would like to welcome you again all. And today program, as I mentioned, will mainly deal with road safety management. We have two distinguished presenters, engineer Javier uh, Lopez uh, and uh, um, Ms. Susana uh, Zamataro. So um, I will start introducing the first uh, speaker who will have the floor to provide his presentation. Engineer Javier uh, Lopez, he is a senior road uh, civil engineer um, with an extensive experience on road safety. Uh, he is currently a senior road safety specialist in the United Nations for Project Services Department. And he has been extensively involved in delivering a lot of 
um, uh, training on road safety audits, uh, either from an academic point of view in universities, as well as in uh, um, uh, governmental sectors in Spain and uh, uh, UK. So uh, his presentation today will be introducing the management of road safety in general in infrastructure and the role of road safety audits and road inspections in this framework. Uh, dear Javier, are you there? Good morning, everybody. Uh, so I will, I will stop my screen sharing. Okay. You can share your screen now. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Well, for the presentation. Thank you, Susana, for being with me uh, because it makes me feel more important. <laughs> Okay, and and thank you everybody, of course, uh, to for all uh, for attending this presentation. Uh, I just I just want to to highlight that I am representing mostly the the Spanish Association of Road Safety Auditors, and that we are um, the same line as all the independent and the three only independent road safety auditors associations. So let's begin. Okay, so uh, as I told you, uh, what I am going to, to um, show you is the, the management, uh, just making a, a, a little point of view from, for the management of road safety and infrastructure, focusing on, on road safety audit and, and inspection because we have to uh, make some answer to a very important question that is what can we do with this strong pandemic that is the road traffic injuries okay uh, these are the facts these are the facts the fact is that we have 1.35 million people dying in our roads every uh, single year the fact is that uh, this is the eighth leading cause of death in road traffic. The fact is that the first cause of death of the people under 30 years old. The fact is that is the 54% of the quantity of deaths in the roads are uh, vulnerable users. The fact is that the uh, when in the high income countries we have uh, 40% of, uh, of the vehicles, uh, we have the 7% of all the, the deaths. The fact is that the, in, the, in the low income countries, there are only 1% of the world vehicles, but we have the 13% of all deaths. What is really, really a, a hard, hard problem, okay? So, of course, everybody knows that this is a, a strong problem, but we have to do something about that. What is being done in the world? In the world, numerous international agencies, such as the World Bank, the World Health Organization, from the United Nations, as some other uh, uh, entities of the United Nations, like ours, uh, and some development banks, uh, like the Inter-American Development Bank, Asian Development Bank, etc are committed to improving road safety in developing countries. Uh, some samples of these actions is like that, uh, United Nations Road Safety Fund, the Global State of Road Safety Report that are made uh, by the World Health Organization, the World Report for the Prevention of Injuries and Traffic Accidents, also by the World Health Organization. And I want to uh, to call this report is, is the report of, on audits and road safety inspection in Latin America made out by the Inter-American Development Bank because, okay, I, I used to work, we used to work in, in Latin America because they are mostly speaking Spanish uh, countries, sp speaking Spanish countries, but the, the uh, conclusions can, can be understood for uh, people all over the world, okay? So, as you can see, this shows us that the concern and belief that we can do something about road safety in the world. You know that the United Nations uh, have set five pillars of road safety, and they are the road safety management at the pillar one, 
the safer transit and mobility routes, the second pillar, safer vehicles as the third pillar, safer users on the transit routes in the fourth pillar, and the response after accident uh, in the fifth pillar. Of course, we are going to focus on the second pillar that is the safer transit and mobility routes. In, in fact, the pillar two, safer transit and mobility routes, say literally the increase the intrinsic safety and quality of protection of road networks for the, for the benefit of all road users, especially the most vulnerable. As we have seen, the 54% of the dead are vulnerable users. This will be achieved through the implementations, through the implementation of various road infrastructure agreement, road infrastructure assessment, and improved road, pl road planning, design, construction, and operation, and operation taking into account safety. Okay, normally everybody understands that it's a hard problem, but uh, the, the question is how, how the people see the problem, we, to who they, they attribute the, the, the injuries. Because, for example, in that uh, study from Australia, they understand that the human factor is the 94% of the responsible of the of the accident the eight percent is the responsible of the vehicle factors and the 28 percent is only the 28 percent the the responsible of the road factor what i want to say is that that most of the people understand that the human factor as mostly the responsible of the injuries are mostly the responsible of the accidents because of a bad interpretation of the facts, okay? For example, I, I have put three different um, samples very near my home, this, for example, that you cannot see the sign. In fact, it, it exists, but you cannot see the sign uh, even if, the, if it exists. And, and this is because of a, a, a lack of maintenance in the, in the vegetation. Uh, when it occurs, uh, in, in fact, it occurred an, an accident, uh, they blame to the driver because he didn't stop. Another one and up on the left, you can see that there is too much an excess of, of signing. And of course, uh, an excess of signing is as bad as a lack of it, okay? Down on the, on the left, this, uh, uh, a road in the in the world. I am not going to, to say where is it, but it's really a nonsense just to to leave this post in the middle of the road and think that just signing it it's enough to avoid the the impact or to avoid the accident. Okay. Another example: uh, the responsible or the responsibles or the authority of this road. Uh, set these uh, concrete planters just to avoid uh, the uh, to, to invade the the pedestrian and the cyclist path uh, to to protect the, the pedestrians and the path with that planters and okay you can see that that is not a correct uh, vehicle restraint system it's, it's even the opposite is a is a hazard in, instead of of a solution okay this is very sad to me because it's, it's, a, uh, well, it's a girl that was uh, working in Italy. It's a Cuban girl that go, went out uh, from the road and, and she hit it uh, the start of the, of the nose of the barrier. Um, and it is not in, important if the, the beginning, the nose of the, of the barrier is well or bad treated because it's the same problem all around the world. If it's under the standards, it's going to be a, a, a mistake of the of the driver, or if it is not in the standards, it's going to be a mistake of the authorities. It's the same result. It's a death. So we have to have treated. Uh, we have to 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 have a, is experts in road safety just to avoid these kind of things. Okay. So to have these experts, what can we do? In in fact, what can we do in this second pillar? I, I have uh, distinguished three phases, three phases. The first is planning phase, where we can do some road safety impact studies. 
the second phase since the preliminary draft till the initial road operation we can do road safety audits and in the third uh, the road operation phase we can do management of safety in road network and road safety inspections okay let's focus on road safety audits uh, the definition is that it's an independent detailed systematic and technically and technical verification of the safety of the design characteristics of road infrastructure project applied to the different phases ranging from planning to exploitation and its initial phase. The objective is to ensure that the roads from their first phase are designed with the optimal safety criteria for all users, verifying that these criteria are maintained during the project construction and commissioning phase of the same. The definition, on the other hand, for the road safety inspections is the periodic regular checking of characteristics and defects requiring maintenance interventions for safety reasons. The objective in, in that case is identify safety defici deficiencies in road infrastructure so that appropriate preventive measures are taken. The definition of the road safety audit then is a systematic procedure for checking road safety conditions. It should be done it in all the stages. Uh, it, uh, it would be done for all possible users of the track. We have to, to take into account of all possible users of the track, not only cars, not only trucks, not only buses, but of also pedestrians, uh, motorcyclists, uh, cyclists, whatever. And we have even to, to focus on that point. Remember that the 54% of the deaths in the world are vulnerable users. The auditor, and this is very important, that's why I, I, I have uh, highlighted this, it should be independent, trained, and expert. Uh, for, for a road safety audit, it's not enough to have a, a good training, a good training course, uh, but uh, you have to have experience not only the training, the experience is very important. And we highlight really that, uh, that part, the expert. And of course, for the road safety audit, the independence. You cannot make a road safety audit if you depend in some way of the authorities of the road. So what is not a road safety audit? It's not a good or bad uh, project assessment. Uh, this is not uh, an, a just a an standard compliance check, and it is not a redesigning, okay? So it's like a medical view, I see. Uh, if you go, for example, uh, to a, a doctor because you have a, an ear ache, uh, you are not going to any doctor. You are going to an, an specialist in your ear, not an any. And you, and you go to any specialist in your ear that has a lot of experience in that okay so it's not enough to have engineers traffic engineers just to to fix this problem in road safety you have to have road safety specialists with a lot of experience in that so why the road safety audits because they reduce the risk of, uh, the risk of accidents because you you may you focus on that part, road safety, from the beginning. You reduce the severity of accidents, even in the, in the worst case. You, you have road safety awareness. Of course, there are costs, cost reductions, because don't forget that every single death costs a lot of money. For example, in, in Europe, uh, we, uh, we notice that it's like one and a half million euros every death in the in the road and of course and this is very important the compliance of standards does not warranty safety okay i remember medical view we are engineering but we are making a medical view we uh, uh, see the problems we see the symptoms of the uh, sick person that is the sick road 
and we propose uh, propose the 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 solutions for that problems okay so which are the the requirements of that road safety audit uh, it should be a multidisciplinary team because it's more than one person that should be in, in the road safety team a road safety auditor team leader and a road safety auditor team member at least but also we have into account all these people that are involved in the life of this road the policemen the responsible of the road the maintenance whatever even even the people that used to to travel in that road okay so let's let, let's think about a multidisciplinary team but also of course the responsibility is is of the road safety team road safety auditors that is the team leader and the team member they should be impartial and independent as i said impartial and independent so it should be uh, not the people the, of, from the authority of the road it should have a uh, clarity in the allocation of responsibilities uh, they, they should have capacity for dialogue and agreement and of course you have to produce some documentation uh, so that everybody can understand and make the 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 things to to fix the problems so which is the process of the road safety audit uh, normally uh, I, I know that qatar is, is an exception but normally we understand that we there are four stages for road safety audit the road safety audit tries to identify potential road safety problems and suggest solutions by which such problems may be minimized uh, in the four stages, uh, the preliminary design in the stage one, the detailed design in the stage two, the construction of the road, I mean, before opening to the, the, to the road operation, is the stage three, and uh, initial road operation uh, in the first month of the operation, that is the stage four. Uh, I mean, globally, and, and I say that uh, Qatar is an, is an exception because the first phase in, in Qatar is the feasibility des design, is what the, uh, we understand like a road safety impact study. So it's a different way of calling it, but it's the same process. Okay. After this, we have the road safety inspections. I mean, during the road operation. As uh, uh, we in, in the association, we uh, understand that after all these stages, we can call road safety inspections. If you have no previous road safety audits, you should not call road safety inspection, and you should call the first study like a impact road safety impact study. Okay, as I told you, I want to highlight uh, the conclusions of the Inter American Development Bank uh, study uh, that was focused on road safety audits and inspections in, in Latin America. And, and you will notice that it's very, very similar all over the world, okay? So in Latin America, and I would say in the, just in the whole world, the application of the road safety audits and, and inspections processes is very incipient and underdeveloped. Uh, the, there are no specific plans or programs for mandatory implement, implementation of road safety audits and uh, inspections regulated by corporate le le legislation. There are difficulties is being there are difficulties in being able to execute road safety audits and inspections because of the lack of human resources for this purpose. Uh, the technical and professional knowledge of the formally oriented aspects of an road safety audit and inspection is very limited and concentrated in few people or some officials who are affected by changes in government and rotation to other areas of state services. So it avoid the what I was telling about, was was commenting that, that we should be experienced. So if there are rotation and there are no specific people working for that, we have lack of experience. Okay, the lack of knowledge of the concept and use, uh, usefulness of the road safety out and inspections makes them difficult to promote and adopt. So what actually do we have regarding road safety audits and inspections? 
The question is that the action in pillar two are not being taken in a clearly effective and diligent manner, giving priority to the actions in other pillars in the human factor and the vehicle factors and uh, management. And I wonder if it would be not an economic reason to, to avoid this kind of actions. Because of course, it's, it's easier to blame the, the drivers and not to take the responsibility to fix all the problems about road safety in the roads. Uh, we, we have to notice that and we have to highlight that. Okay? Despite clear definition and technical indication of actions, the road safety audits are not being carried out or are poorly realized. As, as we have seen in the finding of the Inter-American Inter -Inter -American Development Bank study, okay? Especially serious and is the lack of independence, as I told you, when performing road safety audits and inspections. Many ministries of works make their road safety audits with hierarchically subordinate personnel and without adequate training, having at least national road safety agencies or, for example, or international agencies that could comply with the principle of independence and technical capacity. Technical capacity. So, which is the United Nations approach? What we have adopted to, to, to do that? Uh, we strengthen national road safety agencies, uh, training of independent road safety experts for development or where appropriate supervision of road safety actions regarding to the second pillar, such as road safety audits and road safety inspections. Uh, unify training criteria of these experts according to the most up-to-date and cutting-edge standards. And in the United Nations Office for Project Services, we use the British GG119 together with the SAFE system. We understand that is the best way to fix these kind of things and to uh, undertake the road safety audits. Further ensuring that such training is provided by teachers with proven and vast experience in road safety audits, inspections, etc. We need to create and or modernize road safety standards and manuals in every country, and we can help in that. Road safety audits and inspection standards and procedures, road safety management in road work, and uh, accidentally, accidentality data collections, procedure and management. And this is very important because I see that there are a lot of countries with a poor data collection of accidents. A good data collection of accidents uh, allow us to do good uh, road safety policies. Let's focus on the process of the road safety audits. In, in, in a SEBI, the, the Spanish Association of Road Safety Auditors, as in more, most of, of the uh, undertake uh, of, of the authorities uh, or the association road safety audits, we understand that the system in place in the road safety audit system, there are three categories of road safety auditors. The team leader, or we, we call auditor leader, uh, we, should, we should have a minimum of four year experience in accident investigation or road safety engineering. Uh, we have to, to have conducted at least five road safety audits over the past year. Sufficient training to be a team member, what we call in Spain auditor auxiliar in Spain or uh, Spanish speaking countries. And the recycling course, recycling course of at least two days in the field of road safety audits, accident investigation or road safety engineering during the last 12 months. The second uh, is, is the team member, what we call auditor auxiliar, that it, he should have or she, he, she should have a minimum of two year experience in accident investigation or road safety engineering, uh, conducting, conducting at least five road safety audits over the past two years, uh, a training course of at least 10 days in, in accident investigation of road safety engineering, and a recycling course of at least two days in the field of road safety audits, accident investigation or road safety engineering during the last 12 months. So the 
the most the, the basical most basical road safety auditor is the observer is uh, people that has minimum one year experience in accident investigation or road safety engineering and make a training course of at least 10 days in accident investigation or road safety engineering let me take okay just um, a sketch of what uh, I have said is just to become a road safety auditor team leader, we first have a training course. After that, we have to make some road safety audit under the supervision of uh, a team leader and a team member auditors uh, during one year. And the second year, make some road safety uh, audits like a team member and then after this time you become a road safety uh, road safety auditor like a team leader of course making annually a professional update activity uh, uh, an update course of two days and something like approved uh, accident study okay I understand, we understand that there are different point of views, different understanding about road safety audit and the road safety auditor process of training. Uh, the three uh, roads, the three only in Denver then road safety auditor associations, that is the Society of Road Safety Auditor Auditors in, in Great Britain, the Forum dos Auditores de Seguranza Rodoviaria in Portugal, and the uh, Asociación de Auditores de Seguridad Vial, that is the Spanish Road Safety Auditors Association. Uh, we understand, we have made an agreement. Uh, what, what we understand, like a road safety auditor, and what we understand, we have to do to become a road safety auditor team leader. Okay? So, which, which are the objectives of the agreement? First, support the Stockholm Declarations Agreements at the third world conference on road safety, especially in that point, in those points. Number one and number five, that are the international collaboration in the development of road safety policies for the exchange of experiences and knowledge. Number six, that is encourage the use of the United Nations road safety instrument, like for example, United Nations Office for Project Services, with regard to legislation and the standards on road design and construction. And number 13, minimum road safety compliance uh, standards for investment and improvement of road infrastructure. Unify criteria between the three only independent associations of the world, SORSA, the Forum, and ASEBI, uh, that we are the three only independent associations of the world of road safety auditors in the definition, the training, and the maintenance of the figure of the road safety auditor based on training together and very important with experience and independence. The content of the agreement then is the definition of minimum content of the road safety audit training course, the development and maintenance phases in the training of road safety auditors based mostly on experience and basing the agreement on the principles of equality, freedom, and independence of the three associations of road safety auditors. Let's see, let's take a glance of what is the, which are the difference from the road safety inspections, then, because we have uh, see what is and what can we do with the road safety audit. The definition of a road safety inspection is a systematic procedure in which a qualified professional checks the safety conditions of a stretch of road. It's uh, all aspects of the track and its surroundings for all users. It's about going beyond the technical regulations. And the literal definition in the European Directive is regular checking of the characteristics and defects requiring maintenance interventions for safety reasons. So as we understand, the only difference for um, between a road safety expert that make a road safety inspection and a road safety auditor is the independence. But they should be also an, a well-trained expert and, of course, an expert. So let's 
take a glance to this sketch uh, that is all the, the, the things we can do uh, for a good um, road safety management in our roads. So the road safety strategy, I uh, make a difference in new roads or in existing roads. In the new roads, we, we have preventive approaches. We should make road safety audits and road safety impact assessment. I remind that in Qatar, for example, these are together because the road safety uh, impact study is the first stage of the road safety audit. But in existing roads, we have preventive approaches that is that they are the road safety inspections and the palliative approaches that are it is a management of accident concentration um, concentration sections. Okay. I don't know if I have time. Okay, I, I have chosen some samples. I'm going to, to pass it uh, fast because uh, I think I have not, not uh, enough time. Okay, uh, uh, I am going to focus mostly with these samples in what we could find uh, in the road. So it would be about the uh, road safety inspections and road safety audits in the uh, third stage and fourth stage. Yes, uh, it's under the construction uh, previous or during the, the, the operation phase of the. This is one, we, we have uh, some, a, a lack of uh, the restraint system in the beginning of, of the road of the barrier uh, the beginning of a tunnel that we are going to, to watch the problems with Guillermo the day after tomorrow. Uh, some some problems that are very very common all over the world. The beginning of a barrier that should be uh, not in the same plane of, of the rest of the barrier. The the, the joining of this barrier. What I what I call uh, what I told you before about the beginning and the nose of the of the barrier some transition okay this is uh, uh, a, a nonsense in my opinion of uh, some markings not well uh, erased and next is as i told you of uh, signing is uh, is as bad as a lack of this uh, in in asia in central asia for example you cannot find here for example a pedestrian crossing, uh, the, 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 the view of this sign is very small and, and is completely apart from the road. Uh, and even the post is made out of concrete. Uh, some jokes in, 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 the, in the signing, in the burial uh, signing, instead of take it seriously. Uh, it would uh, Miguel Angel tomorrow is going to to call uh, to talk about this uh, vision of of the drivers and uh, and the influence in the road safety audits, the urban road safety audits, uh, making some focus some pl in some places, slippery surfaces, the entrance from some uh, populations population. Uh, this is in my town. The, the, the samples I am saying the, it's they are all over the world. But I I put this, this for example that is my own town and this is 100 200 far from my home. For example, the, we have mistakes all over the world and we can do a lot of things to to fix that. In Peru, in China, of course they are very pretty. But if you <laughs> have not a, a continuous pedestrian path they have to go through the road instead of the pedestrian path. Uh, these are nonsenses like this is the pedestrian path, but you put a, 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 a fence or a cyclist path that ends on a wall uh, uh, and you stop that you have to stop and you cannot turn to the right and you cannot turn to the left. What should, what should I do? OK, that, for example, you. <laughs> You should not go. You should go uh, compulsory to, to the right, but in fact you cannot stop. It's better because if you if don't you don't you hit to the uh, uh, the the curb uh, or uh, pots that I don't really know what is it. So 
Thank you very much, and I hope it would be useful for you. Uh, you can see all these kind of, of things uh, uh, later uh, at your disposal. Thank you. Thank you, Javier, for your very informative presentation. And actually, I'm uh, flooded with a lot of questions uh, about uh, uh, your presentation. And before we move to Susanna, let me ask you uh, one uh, important question so just to keep the uh, sequence and uh, to the information you presented. Most of the comments actually are evolved around the requirement to be a road safety auditor. So um, you explained several times that you need to have good experience in road safety, you need to have a training in road safety. And uh, so how much experience and uh, uh, how to get this experience and this leads us to a very important question also is that uh, the lack of these personnel who are experienced based on the definition you proposed are not available. We have a lack of uh, experienced road safety auditors worldwide, especially in the third world. So how we can, uh, how we can address this lack and how we can uh, uh, provide support, capacity building uh, for such, uh, I think also Susanna later on will be addressing this, this issue. For sure, Susanna is going to, to answer that very, very clearly. But in our opinion, of, of course, there is an enormous, enormous lack of people uh, experienced in road safety audits. What uh, we say is that, okay, for that kind of things, we, we have in UNOPS uh, a, a road safety team to help all the, uh, all the countries to, uh, for, for these road safety training courses and to uh, undertake the first road safety audits and to help these road safety audit uh, observers and those road safety team members in the first two years. That we understand that this is the minimum uh, time to become a road safety auditor team leader. But it's just to, to want it. Okay, uh, the, the question is, is that, okay, this is very, very, very expensive. Okay, if it's very expensive, and you know, for example, there are some studies in the Great Britain that if you undertake the road safety audit, the, completely, uh, the complete um, process and make the, the things uh, correctly, you can earn the third part of the injuries, the third part. And if every single death we, we earn, we earn one and a half million dollars, one and a half million euros, just calculate how many money you can earn. And if it's how much money you, you can earn, okay? So it's not only the human reasons that it's, it's hard to, to say, but, but even the economical reasons is enough to, to convince the people to make road safety audits and road safety inspections. And to, of course, to, to train road safety auditors, well done, conveniently. Yes. So maybe I also uh, uh, elaborate on what you have explained that um, I guess some of our attendees, they are not very, very familiar with the road safety audit procedure. As far as for Qatar, anyone who, who, who has experience in road safety audit or on road safety in general, either from his work uh, duties or from his academic or uh, involvement, he can start always as a road safety, as a observer. And an observer, you always, uh, you know, uh, just involved with a team of uh, a team member and a team leader where you can observe the process of road safety audits and how it's been conducted and how is the requirement for that. And then you need to involve, of course, for trainings, which a minimum of 10 days, for example, in Qatar, and as Khafir presented, I'm not sure other countries might have different requirements. Uh, uh, probably he, I see his, his face is saying mainly 10 days, so it's 10 days. Then you can submit your resume to be considered officially as a team member. However, as a team member, you cannot conduct an audit. You need a team leader. Therefore, you will be involved after being a team member in conducting road safety audits. Number of road safety audits are required. Further training is required. Further experience road safety is required. Then to apply and to become really a team leader. 
So there is a process. Please, you need to refer to the requirements in your country, the international practices, and we are always happy, the presenters and myself, to contact us if we need more information about that. There are a lot of questions also about the efficiency of road safety audits, and I will move, uh, leave these questions later to the discussion part. And now we move to the next presenter. But before that, I just want to highlight that I'm receiving a lot of comments about three important items, which is firstly the certificates the, uh, for this webinar. Um, or any attend person who attend, uh, participant who attend this three days program fully, uh, and we have the attendance record already uh, uh, in the system, you, you will be eligible to receive an attendance certificate that uh, IRF with, with the uh, Qatar University will be issuing at the end. So uh, if you attend the three days program, so if you attend only two days, you will not be eligible. You have to attend the three days program. The information about this program is available on the registration website in the IRF, which being communicated to you and you see you registered there. So there is the agenda there. You can know the, the information of each webinar of in each day and how uh, the timing as well. Now regarding the link to attend, it's the same link. We have a unified one link where you can use to attend the three days webinar. So you didn't uh, uh, need to uh, worry about what is the link for tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. It's the same link. You access the same link. We'll access the same webinar in the three days. Um, the, uh, the last comment is regarding the records. Many as asking the presentations and the records. We will be uh, sending links to the recording of all these three webinars to all registrants. So anyone registered, he will receive a link to the all recordings uh, after the end of the program. Uh, so uh, this will be open for public, for all who are uh, interested to know more about road safety audits and their role. So thank you. And now we move to the next presenter, um, uh, Susanna Zamataro. And I think most of, our, uh, of us knows Susanna very well. She's the director uh, General of the International Road Federation. Um, uh, she's one of the well-known experts in road safety and uh, uh, advoc uh, internationally for road safety awareness. She is the co-chair of the Safer Roads and Mobility uh, pillar of the United Nations Road Safety Collaboration Group. Uh, Susanna today will I'll, I'll address to us the, uh, in her presentation the 10 steps program for improving road safety. Uh, 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 please, uh, Susanna, the floor is yours and you can start. Thank you very much, Vahel, and uh, a very warm welcome to all of you. I'm, I'm so happy to see so many people uh, online today. For some of us, this is still holiday, it's weekend time, because I see people from all over the world. It shows the interest and the need that we have to build capacity on road safety and more specifically on road safety uh, audits. I will uh, start sharing my presentation. Let me see if it works. Bahel, give me a sign if you are seeing this, uh, this well. Thank you. Um, I've also been uh, uh, reading with a lot of interest to the questions and the comments on, on the chat. I'm also saving all of them to make sure that uh, if we are not able to address, because time is limited today, we'll try to get back uh, to you. And I have a couple of tips at the end of my presentation and during my presentation uh, to uh, answer to some of the questions that have been uh, posed. And thank you so much, uh, Javier, for uh, such an interesting uh, presentation. Uh, well, it gives you a sense that uh, it's impossible to cover really this, this important topic in just one hour. Hence, <laughs> that's why there's so much uh, training and the training takes, uh, takes long. You cannot become an auditor in three days, <laughs> you, you can start putting the, the basis. And I think one of the very first comments before I get into my presentation is, is um, well, road safety audits are uh, more about practice in the end. And I think Javier was saying, um, I understand all of you are, are trying to check what are the credentials and how do I become, but then at the end of the day, what makes a good uh, road safety auditor is, uh, is practice. And that's why Bahel was totally right in the importance of working as a team and on the top of it with, the, with somebody under the, the, the supervision uh, of, of, a, of a team leader who's supposed to be the one 
with the greatest experience. It's, it's a learning by doing uh, also type of exercise. And of course, you need some preparation for that. Time is very limited, so let me quickly uh, jump into the presentation. And, and this is really an example that will show you sometimes on how we can address some of the bottlenecks in, in, in this, right? Uh, some of you were asking how, I mean, there's so much need for, uh, for auditors, how do we do that, etc. The 10 step plan is one of the ways we're trying to answer and address this problem. Two words on who we are so that you can also put into uh, perspective and into context uh, what I will be saying. The International Road Federation, for those of you who are not familiar, is an independent, and I'm, I'm very proud of underlining that independent word, not-for-profit organization. We're based in Geneva, Switzerland, but we operate globally around the world. Our membership encompasses the public sector, so road agency ministries, the private sector, academia and NGOs. 72 years uh, spent uh, working in the field uh, and road safety has always been a key pillar of our action. A lot of activities, but three main baskets or what we call them as strategic pillars, um, knowledge sharing and, and expertise dissemination, uh, networking, so making sure that we connect as we are doing today with these initiatives and we are so proud of our of our collaboration with uh, Qatar University and especially the traffic uh, safety center and, and all the team uh, led by, um, uh, that works with uh, Dr. Vahel. Um, and so making sure that we connect businesses, people, to association ideas, and last but not least advocacy. Advocacy work that we do at a national level, but also international level. Uh, another fundamental part of our uh, work is data, and I think uh, Javier was, was mentioning several times during this presentation on how it is important, how much is it important that we have good data to work on. We do give our contribution to the sector by producing annually the world road statistics. Um, it's, uh, it's now 57 years uh, that we have been collecting data covering now 208 uh, countries. These data are collected, and that's important for you to understand, from primary, primary sources, so directly from the ministries, from the agencies, the national statistical offices. And our data are used by, I would say, any kind of uh, stakeholders in, our, in the roads and mobility sector, so it could be a lot of, of the development banks, the MDBs uh, use our data, uh, companies, academia, NGO, basically anyone who works in our sector. Uh, one, um, one important piece of information for you, uh, thanks to the support of the Total Foundation, this year we have been able to digitalize uh, both um, uh, not, not just the, the, the entire time series of, of our data, but also uh, we have modernized our processes and we do have an IRF Global Road Data Warehouse that f services two purpose. On one side, there's a backend system that allows us um, to deal directly with the countries uh, that can now input their own data on the data input portal. And on the other side, we have an interface for all our users that allows to, to understand, I mean, consult, understand, and visualize data also much, uh, much more easily because analysis is also fundamental. It's, it's important not just to have data, but being able to understand and analyze those data. And we have complemented this piece of work with a, a series of uh, dashboards uh, hosted on, uh, on HESRI uh, that help, in fact, get a quick uh, snapshot uh, when it comes to, uh, to countries or, or, or regions. And it's a fundamental um, tool that, uh, especially for those of us who are involved uh, in uh, advocacy work, we need to uh, translate the information and data we have with something that policymakers can understand uh, quick and fast, and as well as uh, probably even the citizens. 
Uh, and here are some examples. Now, going to the 10-step uh, plan. The 10-step plan has actually been developed uh, in 2019, so last year, within the project group two, uh, the Safer Roads and Mobility Group of the United Nations World Safety Collaboration Group. UNRSC is a collaborative effort that brings around the table uh, the regional commissions of the United Nations, some private sector representatives, uh, the, the development banks, uh, so the MDBs and and most uh, or most of of the of the organizations that work on on road safety, so global MCAP, IRF, and and many many others, including of course the NGOs. Uh, what is the purpose? Why have we done this? The idea is is to really provide a frame a framework that can support countries who are uh, seeking to implement initiatives in relation to the improved road safety, uh, improved safety and road infrastructure, and the achievement of the UN Global Targets 3 and 4 for safer, new and also existing roads. The publication is freely available on GTKP. GTKP is the Global Transport Knowledge um, I see there's a mistake here. <laughs> I will correct it before we, we share it. Um, it's uh, the global uh, transport knowledge uh, platform or portal, and which is, uh, which is um, uh, managed by the um, IRF. I'll just see, ah, there you go. And um, here you have the correct uh, address for the, um, for the, um, for the website. Uh, why am I mentioning this? And, and, and uh, sorry if I'm taking a bit of, of, of time. There are plenty of resources which have been produced by the group that I have the honor and the pleasure to co-chair. So the ones that look specifically on infrastructure and that have been produced by the UNRSC and that are currently hosted uh, on the GTKP portal. Some of those resources, and I hope we will have time, uh, Vahel, in, uh, when we try and answer the questions so that I can show exactly where they are. A lot of this material that you see now displayed uh, here in four main, main baskets will answer a lot of the questions that I've seen, the question and answers today, and we'll get back later on. This is all material which is freely available uh, for you. Let me do this. Now, I said that the 10 step is, is really our, in our uh, a framework that needs to support, the aims to support countries in, in achieving target three and four. So let's have a look at what these target three and four are exactly. The target three, says that by 2030, all new roads achieve technical standards for all the road users that take into account road safety or meet a three-star rating or better. And target four, by 2030, more than 75% of travel on existing roads is on roads that meet technical standards for all road users that take into account road safety. So I think that clarifies for you and, and puts down the setting. What you see on the right hand side of, uh, of my slide is uh, the new target that we have. As you know, uh, many of you probably know, the United Nations uh, General Assembly in September just approved a new resolution on road safety, declaring a new, um, a new decade of action for road safety, which is going to start next year and the objective is really to have road death uh, by 2030. Now the the business case for uh, for safer roads it's a very compelling uh, it's a very compelling case and I'm borrowing this from one of the presentations that Rob McKinney has has, has done um, because I think it speaks for itself. Uh, if 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 you're uh, just looking at it from uh, from uh, the angle of investments, look at what we know uh, already. The return on investment, uh, if you are in uh, a lower income countries, is $18 for every dollar that is invested on safer infrastructure. Lower middle income countries, $11. Upper middle income countries, 15 And you see going forward, uh, worldwide, we estimate $8 return investment for every dollar that is invested in, uh, in road safety and safer roads. 
So we have a very good uh, case. Uh, it's a very compelling case. Investing in road safety is, it is a good investment. Now, going to the, uh, to the 10 step plan for safer road infrastructure, we are delivering this pilot now in Tanzania. It's a two year project funded by the United Nations Road Safety Fund. And uh, there's also co-funding from the Global Road Safety uh, Fund of the World Bank. The project is uh, under the leadership of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, UNECA, and, then, and uh, in partnership and the implementing partners are the International Road Federation. And we're very pleased to be the project lead for, for this one. Uh, IRAP, PIARC, and the Tanzania Road Associations and many others of the uh, uh, stakeholders in the country. The aim is to build institutional capacity and regulatory framework to support UN target three and four in relation to safer road infrastructure. Uh, summarizing, but uh, in a few minutes, I will give you a little bit more on details. What we are trying to uh, deliver at the end or one, the few, uh, three of the uh, expected outcomes is uh, the setting up of a national RAP program in the country, training and accreditation system at the national level and immediate impact on new roads and upgrades. Now, if I go quickly, and um, by hell, allow me a few minutes for, for this, I'm not going to go into just the, into the details, but it's just to give you an overview of what the 10 step plan is. As you can see already in the, uh, in the slide, we have three major milestones in a way. In, in the very first part, step one to four, we are taking stock of uh, what is really already happening, what is in place in the country. And that's what we call in between ourselves, um, the gap analysis. So we will kick off with a, a national safer road infrastructure workshop that will bring around the table all the major stakeholders, uh, 360 degrees, not just the agencies, but private sector, academia, NGOs as well, because this is, uh, this is, uh, um, uh, it, it's not a project of IRF or UNECA or the United Nations. It's a project for Tanzania and Tanzania has to take ownership of it. Um, step number two, we'll do a road infrastructure management organizational mapping to understand exactly where the competencies are, how are they split it up and how the system functions. Then we will pass in review um, national state operational policy standards guidelines and financial financing arrangements and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll look into the existing uh, or we develop if it's not existing yet a, a national safer road infrastructure strategy and action plan uh, step number two uh, or let's say uh, milestone number two we're looking and zooming into the national standards and, and training so we'll take a, a very close look at the design standards in the country to see to, to which extent they do fit the requirements of the UN Global Road Safety Performance Targets. And uh, step six is extremely important for the conversation we are having today. There are very often bits and pieces of training uh, being done here and there. And there are a few countries where there's a, a central strong um, national training and accreditation and certification uh, system. And that's what we will try to build with this uh, project. Uh, when we move to the, to the third, um, third block, infrastructure safety uh, management, here again, we're, we're going towards the uh, building institutional uh, capacity and, and but at the same time going operational. So the objective is to really create a national road assessment program like the China RAP, the India RAP or the Brazil RAP, make sure it stays in the country after the project has, has delivered. Um, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, uh, we will work on a series of, of projects already lined up and then we know will be happening in the country. We will look into and assess the, 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 the design and perform audits as well on, on, on those. And um, we will strengthen the national capacity for infrastructural safety um, at all levels, data management, performance tracking, monitoring and evaluation. The step 10 is also very important because we need to make sure that we celebrate uh, success in the end. 
very often we deliver, we complete the project and it just stays there. It's important that we show that things are possible. It, they can be done and they can be done well. But hell, I'm getting to the end of my presentation. I know we are almost running out of time. In a nutshell, what we want to do with this project is really to build lasting institutional benefits in the country. We want to make sure that we mobilize national and international partnerships and collaboration. Hence, we have pull our hands together in terms of international agencies like IRF, PIARC, IRAP, and, and others to show really the way and show immediate impact on new roads and upgrades. So it's not just a theoretical exercise. The very last part of the project will be really implementing everything we have built and already in some of the ongoing projects in, uh, in the country. This is my last uh, slide just to let you know that we hosted on 9 of September uh, a webinar to zoom really into the 10 step plan. So I think it will be very useful for many of you uh, on the line today. The webinar recording and all the proceedings, so all the presentations are, are available on the IRF web website in this link. And as Vahel just said, we're gonna share with you uh, the presentations so you will have access, so no worries. Thank you very much, Vahel, back to you. Thank you, thank you, Susanna, very much for this very nice um, uh, uh, presentation that give us an overlook of how the United Nations and how the uh, uh, international community going to address road safety or uh, road safety in general, uh, especially in developing countries. Um, so now we come to the discussion session. I will start with you uh, and then we go to Hafir and both of you can comment on uh, the many, many questions I'm receiving actually in the question and, uh, and answer sheet. Uh, firstly, uh, le let me start with two uh, several comments that have been made by participants regarding the previous decade of action and the new decade of action. How the new decade of actions considered the achievements of the previous decade of action. In which items, in which parts, we can see that what we have learned there, uh, either in terms of success or in terms of failures, are reflecting on the new, new decade of action. Thank you, Vahel. Yes, and I saw, I saw a couple of questions uh, as well on, on, on that. Um, it's probably difficult to, to make justice to, to this question with the limited time that, that we have, but I want to share with you a, a couple of, of, of information. Uh, first of all, in 2017, the uh, member states of the WHO, the World Health Organization, have um, approved, agreed and approved 12 global targets to measure uh, progress. And, and this is what we call in between ourselves, uh, ourselves within the UNRC, the voluntary, uh, the voluntary targets. So we do have a very clear now mechanism to monitor progress on the top of it as a collaboration. So the UNRC has even produced a much more detailed document that allows countries as well to uh, build their own monitoring um, uh, system in place for each of the 12 targets. And all this information, I think I will start sharing my screen again to show you all this information. And this document is available on UNRC uh, website. So you can get the details in there. Indeed, when we were getting to the Stockholm ministerial, there's been uh, a number of, of things done. One of them has been, of course, an evaluation of, uh, of dedicated of action. There's a specific document that has been drafted and, and uh, presented in, uh, in Stockholm, and we'll make sure that we uh, will share it with you. And uh, another important piece of information is um, the report that has been produced by the academic group um, in time for the ministerial conference and that has informed uh, the ministerial declaration that has uh, come out. I would strongly uh, advise you to uh, look into these documents to find justice to the question you are asking because it would take a, a lot of time to, uh, to address it now and I don't want to get into this because we need to really take a closer look at each of, of the pillars and I wouldn't want to now um, reduce that conversation on just, oh, we need to do more of this, more of that. One point that came out uh, very strongly from the conversations within the UNRC that we have noticed, pillar five, which is the post-crash care, 
has been and always a little bit the, the poor child in all these efforts. And, and that's a, a strong point, uh, if I may, that I want to do it here. It's while each one of us uh, thinks about no more enforcement, no more infrastructure. Again, let's not forget um, the values and the principles that are behind the safe system approach. It's the safe system approach. All the bits and pieces are fundamental. If there's been a bit of lack of, of action or we could have done more, it's the pillar five on the post-crash care. And that requires uh, a lot of work with, uh, it's not just Ministry of Works, or Ministry of, of Transport, it requires a lot of coordination with plenty of other ministries. And, uh, let me follow up with the safe uh, system approach. We received several comments that whether the safe system approach is really suitable for developing countries. Uh, developing countries, low income countries, they have a different uh, institutional you know, system. And uh, even the multi-sectoral collaboration uh, within the country sometimes is missing and sometimes is not clear. So how a safe, a safe system, a very sophisticated safe system can be implemented and successful in such countries? I, I don't think the safe system approach is, is actually complicated. It's, it's very straightforward. And, and the idea is, is to make sure that each country um, makes, um, absorbs that, that, that thinking and translate it in something that works. Uh, you need to have the basics in place. You need to have a good road agency, make sure you get some budget. So it, you don't need to have complex, sophisticated system in place. You need to have some key fundamentals in place. A road safety agency, resources, uh, a good training of people, standards in place, um, a good data collection system. And of, I can understand that it's, it can feel very overwhelming for many of the, of the low and middle income countries. But you know, just start somewhere. Uh, start with, with the data. There's plenty of training away. There's plenty of technical assistance of, available. So it, it is possible. And we're seeing that happening in many countries. The 10 step plan is again, yet again, Another, um, another plan to help countries move forward, not just by delivering again, bits and pieces of training and, and approach, but we are addressing um, institutional capacity and, and we want to see results, you know, long-term results and, and impact. And uh, absolutely right. And I hear, I can also elaborate that uh, simply the road safety, uh, the, road, uh, the safe system provides a, a conceptual framework where all the elements of road safety are connected. And once you want to address road safety, it will help you to overlook all the elements that need to be considered. And then you cannot, you don't need, you cannot really neglect one item because road safety is actually a, not a one item uh, issue that need to be addressed. It, you have to address it from uh, engineering perspective, from education perspective, from enforcement perspective. And this road system is just a conceptual framework that can be adjusted and uh, changed based on the requirement of each local country. And as Qatar did, uh, Qatar took this road safety system and they uh, um, uh, had a very th a thorough evaluation of the system and went more deeply in categorizing all elements to, uh, to develop a more sophisticated system. That, of course, Qatar did not start this from the beginning, but the beginning, they took the system, they tried to do something, implement, looking over all the safety problem and then going more and more uh, uh, deeper on, uh, on, 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 on mitigating this road safety issue in general. But so, yeah, if I may, and I'm sorry to interrupt you because I think I didn't address the question about the new decade of action. Yes. Uh, we are all at work as a community to in fact prepare a new uh, action plan uh, for the decade. Um, and when I say we, it's the UNRSC, it's all the re regional commissions of the United Nations, it's all the, the Millennium Development Banks. We are all at work. But from the preliminary conversations, uh, it's, it's very clear that we already done a lot of work. Uh, the Save Lives package, for example, it's, it's a fantastic example that translates uh, clearly into practice most of what the, the safe system approach uh, type of concept demands us to do. So know that um, 
we are at work. It should be, uh, yes, the, the new decade will, will kick off uh, next year. And in May uh, 2021, uh, during the, the, um, the UN World Safety uh, Week, it will be probably our opportunity to uh, really uh, bring people up to speed with a new, uh, with a new plan of action. Thank you. So now we move maybe to Javier. Uh, there is a lot of comments uh, about road safety audits. And um, let me start first from a fundamental question that I have received several times. What's the difference between road safety audits and road safety inspections? I have, I think, maybe I, I do it not correctly, but I, I uh, would say that the main difference is the independence. Of course, both of them should have road safety experts to undertake all these kind of works, okay? These road safety experts should be well-trained. Uh, and of course, it have, it, it, they should have enough experience to, to undertake this thing. But the only difference is that the inspections, you can do it with people without, uh, 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 with a relation with the uh, authorities and not in a road safety audit. In a road safety audit, you should be completely independent. So the road safety audit is, 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 is a, a requirement yeah. for uh, an institutional requirement to do for your projects in different stages, while road inspections are just an inspections that can be done by the project owners themselves with other people to investigate. Completely. Completely. For example, for, for the team that are responsible of the maintenance of the road or the, or the technical uh, the techniques of the authorities, it could be completely. This is our advice. This is uh, our assessment. Of course, every single country has to, to do his own work and, and they are independent, of course. Vahel and Javier, if I may, because I wanted also to show, because I can assure you as co-chair of that group that looks into safer infrastructure, we spent almost two years in trying to agree on the difference between what is a road safety audit, what is inspection, what is an assessment, because um, different countries have different uh, practices and have different definitions. If you allow me quickly, I, I'd like to, uh, and because I think it's, it's gonna be very useful for a lot of the people on the call. Do you see my screen? This yes. is the DPKP uh, website. And uh, with UNRSC, we have created here a specific section to, uh, to host all the knowledge resources that we have been produced. So if I enter the safer roads and mobility one, the one specifically looking at uh, infrastructure, you will find plenty of resources in here. In the focus area too, we have actually uh, screened everything that exists in terms of um, uh, road safety infrastructure management tools and methods. And in fact, we have been looking at this issue of differences and, and requirements for road safety audits, inspection, and et cetera, and et cetera. So I would, invite everyone to really take a, take a look. Um, we have, uh, after, yes, long months of discussions, we came up, um, let me see if it shows, um, a quick, a quick uh, table that you see here that we call the entry tool to the different methods. So that distinguishes, you know, we're trying to classify into these boxes um, what is uh, auditor, audits, inspection, and assessments. And the main distinctions we have made, are you looking at new roads or existing roads and whether you're taking a proactive approach or reactive approach. I'll stop here and invite everyone to really take a look at, at all these resources. So you see there's, there's a specific uh, box for, um, for each of the, of, uh, of the tools. And uh, when it comes to, if I go back, also to answering some of the questions that have been done on, on, on the engineering capacity building, et cetera, within the UNIC, we have been trying to identify what are the key core skills that are needed for each of the professions and uh, what would be the, the minimum um, learning requirements for a decent road safety audit, of course, et cetera, et cetera. And you find them all on, on, on GTKP. I'll stop here, otherwise we get too long. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, actually, we follow on the same issue. 
uh, regarding especially for new planned roads, so uh, which mainly related to road safety audits for, through the planning to the design, to the uh, construction and then operational stage. I have many questions about road safety audits in the design and in the planning stage. How much these are effective? For many reasons. First, many uh, designers, they say our design is safe and based on actual practice. So designs are usually safe. First one. Second point is that most of the road safety audits are being paid by the designers as part of their requirements. So how are we gonna ensure independency and truly that the road safety audit is being taken seriously and being implemented effectively on the design? Okay, just one point that I want to keep clear is that as we understand, a road safety inspection should only be called a road safety inspection you have made before road safety audits. If not, we consider a, a road safety uh, impact assessment. Because we, we have to make a new study of everything. You, you can find it in most countries of the world. You have the luck in, in, in Qatar that everything in road safety process are perfectly structure structure okay so it, this is a lack for, i would like that spain has the same but we cannot have the same uh, or the latin america can but every single step is good okay um about the uh, question that uh, how can sorry can you repeat the, the question regarding the road safety uh, the, the audits in the design stage how yes, much I, I, okay of course, if you uh, uh, take into account road safety from the first moment, uh, you are going to improve that. But I prefer this question to be answered tomorrow because Miguel Angel, of course, know perfectly the world in Qatar in, in the road safety audit, and he is going to talk about uh, the road safety audit for design. But, th but this is not only related to Qatar. I have uh, some comments, yeah, from, no. for example, who are saying that in the last 10 years, we have a road safety auditing program authorizing. However, road safety has not been improved. We are in the same situation. We are conducting road safety audits. We are doing road safety audits in the design and the planning. But are these sufficient to really oh, the, do road safety audits? I have showed all the process, of course. And of course, they are super, super useful to make road safety audits from the very first beginning and making from, from the project. because. Of course, correct the, the mistakes in paper is rather more cheap. It's more, much more cheaper than the, that make it in the reality after the construction of a road. Okay. So uh, we can do a lot of things in any case, in any country. If you have a country that you have never done anything about road safety, you can do a lot of things. If you have, you can, you have to do some road safety uh, works uh, in a country when, like Qatar, has a, a well structure uh, about road safety audits, you can do the same. But you have to, to give the importance it has. Uh, comply the, the, the standards uh, doesn't guarantee the, the, the road safety. And Miguel Angel is going to show it perfectly tomorrow. So I think uh, more we can discuss more regarding the road safety and design uh, uh, tomorrow uh, with Miguel. Um, uh, Susanna. I have a very fundamental question. Uh, we always say we need experience. We need experience in road safety. We need qualified road safety team members, team leaders to conduct. The question that I'm receiving here is that many countries, they don't still uh, regulate road safety audits and enforce them. Without having road safety audits, how are you gonna build capacity? And how are you gonna build experience? And how are you gonna have experienced people? So how, what is the way for countries? And actually this is leading many countries to just outsource road safety audits. A lot of companies from different developed countries are coming just to do this without really building capacity in that country. So how IRF, United Nations, this, this leading international community could help in developing sustainable road safety inspection or auditing programs inside different countries? Thank you, Wahel. That, that's exactly what we're trying to do with the 10-step uh, plan. 
uh, one of the key components will, will be not just training the people during the span of the project, which is two years. <coughs> we are trying to make sure that we we'll build the system within the country. And most of, of those countries, including Tanzania, have actually, they do have some sort of a, a system or process. <laughs> It's clearly not working uh, as it should uh, and or not to its, its best. So part of the project will be really to review, first of all, if you remember the very initial part, the gap analysis, what is, who is doing what in the country? Is it working? Is it not working? Where are the gaps that we need to fill and uh, to address and how are we going to address them? So one of the key outcomes of the project will be, in fact, to make sure that we leave the country with a solid national training accreditation system in place, which is not complicated, right? And we also make sure that there's capacity built within the country. So our intention is really to work with the, with the local universities, with the engineering association in the country, to make sure that once we leave, that the project is over, this can 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 still move uh, move forward, and we are here. I mean, we are here to back up. IMF hosts uh, plenty of, of trainings around the world. We do have MOUs and collaborations with uh, the University of Qatar, the University of Birmingham. So it's it's part of our mission. But that's exactly the same reflection that we have uh, we have made. We need we are always looking at the problem downstream <laughs> for uh, you know trying to do some training and collect. But that work is fundamental. You need to train people, of course. But Maybe Lara, I follow up with the same because in the, for the same answer, um, some comments are addressing IRAP. You emphasize on the importance of IRAP um, and it's becoming more and more uh, important. A lot of investment from the World Bank towards implementing and developing IRAP programs. However, most countries they don't have experience with IRAP. So it's simply a consultancy fund that enters to these countries by international uh, uh, firms without really seeing a direct investment or a direct building capacity on the country. So how IRF is helping to develop I, uh, uh, maybe IRAP and, and, and uh, advocating for importance of IRAP, but as a prime element local, locally within the country. Exactly. So that's as well one of the, the key components of the 10 step uh, project. And that's why we wanted so much to have it here today. Uh, part of the training, uh, will, so trainings will be delivered on road safety engineering because we need for some to put some basis. There will be trainings on road safety audits and inspections. And there will be trainings on IRAP methodology as well, on the assessment. And uh, IRAP has, has tremendously developed its own uh, training uh, offer as well, and, and also reducing uh, quite a bit cost. And there's plenty of technical assistance which is available and that allows today those training to be really accessible with, with few dollars to, uh, to everybody. So my recommendation, we look forward to deliver the, the Tanzania pilot and we want, uh, I mean, the plan is to make sure that uh, with that, we're able to show what is possible and how to do it so that it can be replicated and scaled up in so many other countries and not just in Africa, but, but all over the world. And let me tell you just one thing. Uh, the, of course, in the United Nations Office for Projects and Services, you can find any office of UNOPS in every country of the, of the world. And we have developed a program to, to train and to make a the the theoretical and practical training on road safety auditors and, of course, road safety inspectors. That is the, I, as I said, the only difference is the independence. So uh, we can train people uh, and, and we can help people to become road safety team leaders just helping in the first road safety audits. Uh, we are just at your disposal. Thank you, Javier. So I think uh, we are about to end. The, we have only one minute and a half. And let me ask the final question, which I received also several comments. Um, Susanna, you addressed a lot in your presentation as one element in the 10 step is road safety engineering. Road safety engineering. Javier, you are a road safety auditor and an engineer. There are many road safety auditors who are not engineers. So. Uh, how road safety engineering need to be built and what 
and for what connection with the road safety audit procedure? Is it means that we prefer our road safety editors to be engineers, road engineers, so which will give them more wider view on the safety issues around those? What is your what, what is your thoughts about this, Haki? Then we okay. will find the comments by. I am going to talk about my, uh, from my experience, okay? My experience in here in Spain, uh, I am a civil engineer, but I haven't received a, a training about road safety in all the years of my uh, career about uh, road safety. I have uh, received a lot of training about a lot of things, even in roads, but not in, in road safety. Okay, I, I know how to calculate the, the package of the road and how to support whatever, but not about road safety. All the, the training that I have received as a road uh, safety, it has been after, the postgraduate uh, course. But it depends on the country. For example, in, in, in Spain, you should be a, a, an engineer to become a road safety auditor. But there are some other countries, like for example, Great Britain, Great Britain you should only have some experience in, in road safety and uh, in accidents or, or whatever to become a road safety auditor. But of course, as I said, the, the main thing you have to take into account is the experience. Thank you. All the process about Experts. Yes. Yes. So that, uh, if, I, if I can add, uh, if I can add uh, to that, what we have always been preaching or discussing within the UNRC is also the diversity of the team. It's a team that delivers an audit, and it's extremely important that it's uh, diversified. So more and more, we look at profile, uh, including profile, for example, who have psychology type of, of background, because that helps you. Um, you know, uh, assess what you're looking at in a, in a different way from the perspective of, of, of the user as well. And I, I, I'm sure a lot of the engineers here might not be, uh, <laughs> but every competence is important. And of course, engineering has to be there, but the diversity of the team, I think it is what makes the, the team really successful. Indeed, indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Hafir. Thank you, Susanna. We had, uh, I hope that our uh, uh, participants enjoyed uh, this one hour and a half uh, webinar. Um, I would like to thank you very much, Hafir and Susanna, for your time today, for your efforts. And uh, I would like to now share my screen. Um, so, uh, I would like to uh, introduce the next uh, webinar tomorrow, which will address uh, road safety audits in the design stage. So road safety audits and the design. And uh, we have engineer Ma uh, Miguel also from the United Nations Department of uh, uh, Projects who will be presenting and discussing about this important issue. Um, it will be in the same timing at 1 p.m. Doha time to 2.30. Uh, uh, and you can use the same link to access this webinar. I would like to thank you again, all of you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the tremendous number of important questions we received. We have more than 120 questions actually, around 120. And I think uh, Susanna, we need later on to uh, uh, do something to, re to respond to all those who could not really address their questions. Uh, thank you all, have a good day. And uh, we're looking forward to see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you very much for all. Gracias, Javier. <laughs> bye bye. Gracias. Frego. Frego, Susana. <laughs>